Hey everyone, in this video I will show you how to make this missile path effect. So here you can see that I can move this target on the ground anywhere I like. And when I let go of the button, a missile will be fired at that location. It can be very close to the character also like this one. And you can also move it very far. And you can set the maximum and minimum limits. Here I can move it to the creature and you can see that it gets highlighted and the color changes which is really optional so if you don't really want to do it you don't really have to do it and here I can have a different color for a different character and we will also be making the fire effect you can see on the missile but we won't be making the explosion the explosions are free so I will show you where to get them it is from the marketplace paragon assets from the marketplace so we won't be making the explosion but we will be making the smoke effect on the missile and also you can customize it in a lot of ways so here i have a new effect like this by choosing a different mesh and I can also have something like this and you can obviously control the color and the size of the meshes used using another mesh gives a result like this and you can have a result like this also then a result like this also so you can customize it in a lot of ways depending on the mesh you create you can also do other stuff so here you can see that the in-between portions don't render and also you can set the length of your sections also so now here you can see that the lines are not reaching the ground and obviously you can do a lot of changes to the color and to the growth and the movement etc but i won't be showing that here once we start making the tutorial i will show you the rest of the parameters you can change and if you want to download the entire project file you can support me on my patreon and for five dollars you can get this and also you can get almost all the project file from my previous tutorials and if you already support me on my patreon thank you very much for your continued support i will also be giving all the meshes in patreon but to follow along i will also be giving all these assets so these models all these models i created in blender and these textures are all from substance painter they are really basic and this t circle texture i got from a website the license for this texture is cc0 or public domain so you can use it however you want you can get this resource free from the download link below even if you don't download any of this you will still be able to follow along so this missile can be replaced by a cone this rocket holder can be replaced by a cylinder and these two can be replaced by a cylinder also or a cube but you won't get this effect on top but you don't really need that if you just want to create the missile path system it is just a visual and you probably won't need that so to get started first we are going to create the decal and also the sphere so to create the decal right click then materials and i will call this m underscore circle decal then open it up then change the shading model to unlit and change the material domain to deferred decal and here you can change the blend mode to translucent and this blending mode to emissive we only need the emissive and now you can get the circle texture and bring it here you can also use any kind of texture you want it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be this circle texture one thing to note here is that you have to set the sampler source to clamped because we don't really want it repeating when we rotate it 
and then we can just get a rotator so it will create the rotating motion so just connect it to the uvs and if you connect the red channel to the opacity and now if i click apply and i can drag this decal into the world and right now you cannot see anything because it is emissive so i will just get a constant and make it white so now you can get a rotating circle and now if i bring it here you can see that it is having this weird effect but it doesn't have that effect when we move it along this but if it is 90 degrees we have this weird effect so we want to avoid that so we don't really want it to render at 90 degree angle so in order to prevent that we can go to the decal and here we can type in scene texture then we can change this to world normal so this is only available for translucent materials by the way so get the world normal then we will just mask this and we only want the blue channel and now if i just connect this to the msc color and click apply you can see that this part is invisible because it is a black color right now but we want the msc color for something else so we can just multiply this with the opacity and i can connect that there so now you can see that that is invisible so it is happening like that because we are only rendering if the b value is like close to one so if you want to find out what's happening i will just connect i will just disconnect it here and connect this to the mc color and click apply here you can see that there is no b value here and in the ground there is a b value so if we isolate the b value we will get a zero value here you can also get this by dotting by a three vector with a value of one four b so now i will just connect it here and i will just delete that and for the msc color we will create a collection parameter so we can change the color on all the elements at the same time so go to materials and texture then material parameter collection and i will call this pc underscore color then open it up then we can add a vector parameter and and we can call this color and we can set this to like a orange color and then we can go to the decal and here we can type in collection parameter and select the color and connect this to the msc color and click apply so now we have this rotating circle now we will create the sphere so i will just bring a sphere into the world and i will scale it by five like this now we can create a material for the sphere also so right click then material and i will call this m sphere then open it up then we will change the blending mode to translucent then we can change this to unlit then we need it to be two-sided and we will change the shading model to unlit now for the msc color we need a texture so for that we can go to the starter content and texture and we can get this hex texture and bring it here and now if i connect the green channel to the opacity we get something like this and if i get the collection parameter and color and connect this to the mc color we get the sphere like this 
If I apply this and apply this material to the sphere, it kind of looks like this. Now we can get a UV coordinate and a rotator. Then we will get a multiply. So we can tile the image and connect this to the UV and change the multiply value to like 7. So it will be really small. Now duplicate that. Then we will add this here and add the green channel here and we will just saturate this. So that will clamp the values between 0 and 1 and connect this to the opacity. Then we can get another multiply and connect this here and connect this to the UV and this time we will give a value of 3 here and click apply. So now we have this sphere but this doesn't really look that good. So since this is two sided we can only render the grid on the inner side of the sphere. So in order to do that we can get a two sided node. So if it is in the outside it will give a value of 1 or if it is the inner face it will give a value of 0. So here if we 1 minus this and multiply that with this one. we will only render the grid on the other side. So the front facing side will be invisible. So it kind of gives this cup kind of effect. Now we can also make the center portion a bit more transparent. So for that we can get a Fresnel node and we can get a multiply. Connect the Fresnel to the multiply and then connect this to the saturate. Now you can see that the center is a bit more invisible. We can also increase the exponent value to like 12 or something like that. Then it will be more harsh. We can change the base reflect to 0. So now we get something like this. I will change the exponent back to like 4 or something like that. So we get an effect like this. I think 6 will be better or 7. So now we have something like this. No matter where you look from, it will look like this. So now we need to have that outline effect when the spear touches the ground. So in order to do that, we can get a depth fade and we can get a scalar and I will call this fade distance and I will give it a value of 200 and here we have to 1 minus this so what this node does is that when the mesh intersects something it will give a zero value to the portion that is near to the other mesh so if you invert that the portion that is near to the other mesh will have a value of 1 so now here we can just add this with this one and connect this to the saturate and click apply so it looks like this so i think the 200 is a bit too much i will give a value of 100 and now we need a different color here so we need a white color so for that we can connect this to a and we can connect this to the mz color and then we can connect this to the alpha here and for the b we will just get a vector parameter by pressing and holding V and clicking and then we can name it color and we can connect this to the B here so it will give an so it will give an error because this is a four vector so we need to mask this so it becomes a three vector and don't forget to tick the B channel because we need all the color channels now connect that here and for the value of this one I will give a white color with a value of 15. So now if I click apply we get something like this. We can floor this value 
So now it will be defined better. But now we can reduce the fade distance to like 35, something like that. I think this is a bit too bright. So I will set the color back to like 7. Okay, so that isn't too bad. Now to get the intersection effect, we can get a cylinder. So now we will just add this cylinder to custom render pass. So here you can do this by using two different methods. One is by adding the cylinder to a custom render pass and we can use that to isolate the cylinder inside a translucent material. Another one is to have this sphere have an overlap or a collision or something like that. And when we enter the cylinder, we can create a dynamic material instance for the cylinder and change the color of the material inside the cylinder's material itself. Right now, we are just going to use the custom depth. So add that to the custom depth and go back to the material. And here we can type in scene depth. Then we can type in scene texture. Then change this to custom depth because we need to isolate the cylinder only. So add this to custom depth. Then get a mask. Because here you can see that it has only the red channel. Since this is a linear value, it will only have a linear value. That is a black, white and gray scale. There won't be any color. So now after, after this, we need to subtract the scene depth from the custom depth. Then we need to seal this. So values are either 1 or 0. And saturate this because ceiling doesn't make it 1 or 0, but ceiling will make a value not 0. If, if the value is more than 0, it will be the next integer. So it will be 1, then 2. We won't have a value in between if we seal that. Then when we saturate that, the value is clamped between 0 and 1. So now if I just connect this to the alpha here and click apply, and if I move this, so now we can get a LERP here by pressing and holding L and clicking and connect this to B and connect this to the MC and connect this to the alpha here. And now we can get another vector parameter and we can name this highlight and connect this to the A of the LERP. And now we can just select a green color or something like that. And now click apply. And now if I move this to the cylinder, you can see the green color. So I will make the sphere a bit bigger. So what's happening here is that the front portion of this cylinder is invisible. So this won't render the custom depth value we just gave. So we need to make this portion have an opacity also. So in order to do that, we can just get an add and connect this here and connect this here. And we can one minus this because it will be zero, but we need it to affect the opacity also. So now if something is in the custom depth, then it will be rendered green. And also the opacity value here is like one because it is on the custom depth. And here we have one minus that and added that. So if I move it here also, we can add this to the custom depth. And it will render like that. If we need to get the detail, we can duplicate this. 
then we can get the world normal like before so this can also be done inside the material of this mesh by the way inside this material you can have an mc color here also with the final and everything like that and inside that you don't really have to use the world normal also now we need to mask this then we can get a lock and connect this to b and connect this to the alpha and connect this to the a here then here we can type in scene color and connect this here and click apply now we have something like this so here we can get a fresnel and connect this to the normal and connect this to the alpha and click apply so now we have a highlight like this and so we can increase the value to like 12 or something like that so now we can see the highlight like this i will set the base reflect to like zero so now we get a highlight like this and that's it for the sphere now we will create the projectile path so for that we need to go to the man again then go to the skeleton and here you can see that i already have a socket on the left side so i will add one for the right side now so here we can go to the right side and we can select this this bone clavicle r then right click add socket and now we can see the socket there now we need to preview a mesh so we can go to add preview then i will type in rocket so you can get this mesh for free from the resource pack by the way and if you don't have it you can use a cylinder so if i preview that you can see that how it will show up so we need to rotate this like this and now position it like this So we need it to be like this and we can also rotate it slightly this way so it faces this direction and here you can also use a cylinder so here we can go here and we can just rotate it slightly this way like this so again it looks like this so this really depends on you how we want it rotated now we need to open up the mesh this rocket mesh then you need to add two sockets so create socket and call it whatever you want like direction or something like that and you can just add it like this so i have added two sockets so one is the mouth it looks like this and the second one is a missile this is the one that holds the missile so if you want to do this with a cylinder then you can just bring in the cylinder like this make a copy and open this up then create the mouth socket like this and create the missile socket also one thing to note here is that this direction will depend on the way our missile gets fired so you can rotate this to an angle you want so keep that in mind so here if i select the mouth 
you can see that it is pointed in a slightly bent angle so it's kind of pointed this way so our rocket can point like this so if i select the mouth socket i can rotate it whichever way i want so if i rotate it like this and hit play you can see that our path system doesn't really work and it and it looks like that so i can rotate it like this so i will just reset the rotation here and if i select the mouth you can see that it is pointing this way now if i just rotate it like this like straight up then it will look like this so depending on the angle of this socket it will affect your path so keep that in mind this also get affected by this socket by the way so here we also need to make sure that this red forward axis is pointing forward so what we can do is that we can just rotate it like this and now if you look at it it is pointing forward you can just rotate it like this so now it's pointing forward so this is what we want if you don't really have this rotation correct it won't really work very well so now we can go to the third person character and go to the viewport and here on the mesh we can add our new rocket holder like this so it will go here and now i can select this magnifying glass and i can choose our clavicle r socket so it brings that here so here this one i have scaled to 1.5 i can scale it down like this also so here you can also bring in a cylinder so if i select the mesh and type in cylinder or the cylinder we created here this cylinder i can just bring that into the mesh and here i can also set this to this clavicle socket so it will be really huge i can make it small and if i just scale this to zero then you can see the cylinder so you can also do this with a cylinder and a cone if you want so that's all you need to do i will just delete the cylinder and add our rocket back in now if i press play you can see that i am carrying two rockets and now we can add the missile to the rocket so for that you either need a missile or a cone like this but you don't really have to add any sockets to it so if i select the missile and bring it into the rocket holder so now here i can select this magnifying glass and i can select the mouth so you can see that it is rotated this way so here we we need to select the missile so if i create a new socket and if i move it somewhere here and now if i go here and select that socket then it will be there and if i press play you can see that it is moving like this so that socket kind of controls the position of the missile so i will set this back to like this location and that's all we need to do to position the missiles now we will create the projectile path for that you need to open the third person character blueprint then we need to get a tick then here drag from this and type in path 
then projectile path by object type or you can use a trace channel if you have a specific channel for your landscape and just going to use the object type so to make the tutorial a bit more faster ideally you need to create a trace channel for the landscape only and then use that but this will work too now here for the object type we can drag and type in make array and this should be world static so the landscape is world static so it will only hit that it will hit anything that is static this landscape this wall etc trees but it won't hit the blueprint actors because they are world dynamic so so here for the start position we need to bring in our static mesh rocket holder then we can get socket transform then we can break this and here this socket should be this mouth so we can type in mouth then we can connect this to the start position and for the launch velocity right now we can get the forward direction so from so from the rotation type in forward get forward vector then we can multiply this by a float and type in like 2000 or something like that then connect that to the launch velocity then for the projector radius i will give value of 20 then here we will draw the debug line for the duration then click play so now you can see the debug line and if you want to have more dots then you can change the maximum simulation line to like 10 so it will go all the way to the ground and if you want to have more paths then here for the simulation frequency you can type in like 30 or something like that so here we have a lot of spears we don't really want this many so we can change this back to like 12 or something like that so we get a manageable amount of spears now we want to create a sequence node now we will add a new component and it is going to be a spear mesh and we will call this grid spear then if we go to the viewport we can change the collision preset to no collision and we can set the scale to like 5 that's really huge maybe 3 now for the material we can we can apply the material we created so this one like this now if you go to the world you can see that it is rendering like this so now so now we can set the visibility of the sphere to invisible so untake this so right now for showing something i will just tick that again so now go to the event graph then here we can bring in the grid sphere and type in set world location then we can connect this here and we can set this to teleport and we can set this to the new location so now you can see that our sphere is being rendered wherever we move like that so it's very random that's because our animation is moving but we will be posing that so that doesn't really matter that much so now we need a way to control the position of this spear so in order to do that we need to get mouse wheel axis this event then when here when we scroll the mouse wheel this axis value changes so here we can also 
do that with the rotation of the mouse like this but i found that to be a bit more buggy you can certainly do that but it kind of obstructs the vision you can also get it to move using the y value of the control rotation like this when we move the camera like this it can move but i found that to be a little bit more buggy and hard to control so i'm using the mouse wheel so for that we will add a new variable and we will call this direction and we can set this to a float then we can uh, drag this in then we will drag the direction in control drag it then we will add this with this axis value and we will set this like this and here like this and here we will get the direction float we will multiply this forward vector with this direction then we add that with this new vector so we are essentially controlling the velocity using the mouse wheel so this is a static constant velocity that we give and this direction value will control the variable velocity so now if i press play and if i scroll the mouse wheel you can see that it is moving wildly because the values are a bit too big so in order to fix that we can divide this by 10 so if you divide this by 10 then it will be a much more manageable value so now if i scroll you can see that it is moving like this but it is a bit jerky so in order to fix that we can go here and we can type in interrupt and f interrupt 2 then we can connect this to the direction and for the current we can connect the direction and for the target we can connect this value of the sum then for delta time we can type in world delta seconds and for the speed we can give a value of 10 now if i press play it is smoother so if you want it to be a bit more smoother you can change this value to like 5 or something like that then it will be a bit more smoother like this Now we need to control the maximum amount of distance we can cover so and the minimum so we can get a branch then we can do less than um, point zero 0.05 so we will do greater than 0 0.05 and here we will do less than 0 0.7 then we will just add this together so it will only be true when both of these statements are true then we can connect this to the condition and if i press play and here if i just scroll nothing happens so let's see what are the values we are getting so i will just print so the values are really small so here what we need to do is that this should be minus 0 0.05 or minus 0 0.1 now we can move this but it is not getting closer so this value can be like more than negative 0.4 so it can get much closer so i will just delete this so the amount of distance will also depend on this value this 2000 so we can 
promote this to a variable and we can call this speed and we can set this to like 1000 and now if I press play I can make it come much closer. So now we only want this when we press the E key. So in order to do that, we will select the grid sphere. While we are at it, we can also bring in the decal. So, so now I will just add the decal. So I will just select the decal, then go to add component, then type in decal, then just add that. So now if I go here, you can see that the decal is projected this way. So we can fix this by going to the rotation and giving it a value of negative 90. So now it's really huge. So I will just scale it down a bit. That's too small, I think. I will set this to like point Two. and for the C value I will set it to like 1 and I will set the Y value to like 1 I will set the X value to like 1 so now it's a bit more visible so now I will scale the grid sphere a bit more like 8 or something like that in all three axes so now we have something like that you can also scale the decal down a bit more if you want so I will change this to 0.15 or maybe like 0.17 okay that seems fine now we will set the visibility of this grid to do not render and also of the decal so now we need to show this when we press the E key so for that type in E keyboard and bring in the grid and the decal and type in set visibility and on pressed we will set this to visible and so you can use this propagate to child and so we don't really need the decal now so now we can paste this again and in here we can connect this and set the visibility unticked. So now if I press play and press E, we can see the sphere. And if I release E, it will be invisible. So now we need to control the lines using this. So we can go here and we can get a gate. And now we can create a custom event. We can call this show path. And connect this to open and we can create another custom event and we can call this hide path then we can connect this to the closed and now when we press the E key we can call the show path and when we release it we can hide the path so now if I press play and now if I press E, you can show the path. And when I release the E, we cannot see the path. So now we need to post the animation. So drag it in. So now here you can type in set animation pose. So connect this here and press play. And if I press the E key, the animation is paused. And here we can drag in and type in set pause anim. 
and we can untick this. So if I press play and press E, it is paused and now it is not paused. So when we do this, it is paused. Now we need to move this when we rotate the mouse. So in order to do that, so here we can do use control rotation yaw and we need to tick that also. We need to duplicate that. And here we need to untick that. So now if I press play and press E, I can move the sphere like this. And when I press E again, now only the camera changes. So this speed of the rotation is controlled by this input turn axis. You can control you can control this value with a float variable. So if you need to slow down the rotation when you are aiming, you can do that like that. Also here, make sure that the grid sphere has no collision. We don't really want that right now. So now we can make this a bit more smoother by dragging this in and type in V interrupt two. And here we can get the get world location. So this will be the current world location. And now this will be the target and connect this here. And now for the delta time, we can type in world delta seconds. And now here for the interrupt speed, we can do like 10. So now if I press E key, it is a bit more smoother, the movement of the spear. So now I'm just going to delete this. We don't really want that. And now we will create the spline path. So for that, we need to add a spline to our rocket mesh. So I will call this spline underscore path. Then we need to parent this to the mouth like this. I don't really know why that is showing there. It must be a bug or something like that, some UI bug. Now here, drag from here and type in for loop and connect this to the sequence here and type in add spline points. So select the spline path. Then connect this to the position and connect this to the index and the and the coordinate should be the world. That will just bring it down a bit. And here, once we complete this, we can drag and type in set spline point type. And we can connect this here. And we can change this to like curved clamped. And for the point index here, we can drag this in and type in last index. And connect this to the point index. Then here we will add the mesh to the spline. So, so for that, drag and type in for loop and get the for loop. And for the last index, we can drag from here and type in get number of spline points. And here we can just subtract that with another value. So this will control the position of our last mesh. So I will set this to two for now and we can connect this to the last index. So now we can do add spline mesh component. And for the static mesh, we can do a cylinder for now. And here the forward axis should be C and we can drag from here and type in set start and end. So now for the star location, we can just bring the array of the locations and type in get a copy. So it will get the copy at this point in the array or at that index on the array. So that will be the star location. And the star tangent you can get by bringing in the spline path. And here you can type in get tangent 
at spline point. So this uh, code is similar to the one in the VR blueprint or the VR template. Now change this to world and connect this to the point index and connect this here. And to get the next position of the point, we can just simply add this by one and we can just duplicate both of this, connect this here and connect this to here and here we can connect this to the point and connect this to the target and now we can connect this to the end tangent and connect this to the final position and if I hit play and press E you can see that it is drawing everywhere but there is our spline point so we need to clear this every time we call it so in order to do that we need to store these points in an array so we will drag this and type in promote to variable and we will call this points array and disconnect that for now and we will change this to an array and now we will just delete this and we will just control drag this in so we get this get and here we can type in add and we can connect this here and we can connect this to here and connect this here So now we need to clear this every time we update the location. So in order to do that, we can go here. So now we can control drag this in again. And here we can type in destroy. Then we need to untick the contest sensitive. And we can type in component. So destroy component. Then we will type in clear and now and now take the contest sensitive and get clear array now we need to clear the spline points so we can drag that in and type in clear spline points and now we can connect this here and press play and if I press the E key you can see that our cylinder is drawing and when we let go of the E key it is still there so in order to fix that we can just select all of this and right click then collapse to function and I will call this function clear and then I will just copy paste that here and connect this to the hide path and now if I press E I can remove that also now we don't really need the draw debug line and here we can also take the manual attachment so we don't really see that warning anymore so now if I press this and escape out we don't really see that warning because we did manual attachment. So now we can also scale the mesh. So in order to scale the mesh, the normal way gave me some errors. So we can type in set scale start and then we can do set scale end. Then we can connect both of them together like this and connect this here. Then we will do make literal float and here we cannot connect this here like this so we can just split this and we can connect this individually and now we can set this value to like 1 or 0.1 now if I press play and press the E key it is not changing so we need to connect this here like this 
So now if I press play, so it's really small. Now we can create a new material for our spline. So M spline white. This will be the white color. So we can set this to unlit and we can get a color and I will set this to a white color with a value of 5 or something like that. Then if I press apply and if I try to add this to the material, it won't show up. So in order for this to show up, we need to select this and type in spline and tick use with spline and click apply. So now if I press E, you can see that our mesh is white. So now if you need the moving lines, then we can go here and type in time and then we can get a linear gradient and then we can do an add node here and we can get a multiply connect this here a scalar and connect and change this to speed you can get a scalar by pressing and holding s and clicking and i will set this value to like uh, two or something like that then connect this here connect this here and get another multiply and a scalar called amount this will control the amount of rings and i will set this to like two then connect this to B here and get a sign node and saturate that. So we will discard the negative value for now. Then we will get a LUR and connect this here and connect this to here and connect this to the alpha here. Then we will get the color node again and we can give a value of 10 for red channel and connect this to B and click apply. So now you can see it. We can also power this. And we can increase the red value to like 100, 100 or something like that. So we can view it, but if you make this darker, we can view it better. So, so now we get something like this. I will cover the use of the custom mesh last. So now we will create a missile. So right click, blueprint class, actor, BP missile. Then we can create a sphere collision. And we can make that the root. Then for the mesh, you can either use the comb or if you have the mesh I gave you, you can use this mesh and just rotate this in this direction. Then we can add a projectile movement component. Then here make sure that the velocity is set to x1. Then everything else here is 0, 0. We will set this from the blueprint. So now we can go back to the third person character. Then here, this velocity we will store. So right click, then promote to variable and we can call this missile velocity. And we can all drag that in, then connect this to here and connect this here and connect this to the location. And when we let go of E, we can spawn actor from class. And that should be the missile actor we created just now. This one. Then for the spawn transform, we can get the rocket holder and get 
socket transform and connect this here and change the socket name to mouth then if i press play and press e key you can see this and the missile is falling down so in order to prevent that so now we can drag and type in get projectile movement component then type in set velocity and for the velocity we can just drag in the missile velocity and press play and if i press e and press this it will go that way and maybe that's because of the collision let's disable the collision so i will just disable the collision and also of the missile just disable that for now and if i press play you can see that it is going that way which is not what we want so we need to fix that so now we need to go here to the projectile movement then we need to find rotation follows velocity so now you can see that the missile kind of curves even if it is going in the wrong direction so it is always going backwards so we need to fix that so here we are supposed to connect the velocity here so this launch velocity we are supposed to connect that here that was the error so now if i press play and press e you can see that our missile is going like that and now we can go to the missile and set the collision to block all dynamic and now if i press play you can see that it is shooting the missile and if you have any collision issues then you can just delay the collision like this if you want now you can select the spear and click on component hit then we can just print it and if it hits something it should print that but it is not printing anything so the collision is not working so we can go here and tick generate hit events and here block call dynamic and if i press play so now you can see that it is stopping like that so we don't really want that so we can go to the begin play and type in delay here we will just have no collision and here we will just drag this in and type in set collision enabled and with query and then we will type in set collision object type to world static and now if i press play you can see that it is printing hello now we can play some explosions so one really good explosion is this iggy scorch ultimate from the from the paragon iggy scorch asset from the marketplace it's free from epic so you can use this or if you don't have that then we can go to the starter content and go to the particles then get this explosion and here we can type in spawn emitter at location and we can use this explosion and now we can just break the hit and connect this to the location here and here we can also destroy the actor like this so our missile is destroyed so now if i press play it creates that explosion or if you want you can use this iggy scorch ultimate it is it is free so you can just add that and now if i press play so the rotation is incorrect for this one so in order to get the rotation correct we can get the normal and type in rot from x and connect this to the rotation and now so here i made an error 
we are not supposed to use this uh, scorch but we can use this turret explosion from the same Iggy and scorch asset pack so i will just add that and press play so now we have this working now we will add the trail to the missile so in order to do that now we will create the smoke so for that effects niagara system and then we will select founded it doesn't really matter which one you select then i will call this ns smoke path then open it up then here i will disable the velocity cone i will disable the gravity force and then the spawn rate i will disable and in that place i will type in per unit now i will just set the per unit value to like 18 and for the sprite renderer we can select a new material we can go to the starter content again and go to particles then materials then open up this smoke sub uv and it should be lit for you just change that to unlit we don't really want the lit particle so just unlit that then we will use this one click apply then we will use this one then since this is an 8 by 8 sub uv we will give an 8 and 8 here and for the particle update we will type in sub uv animation and since this is an 8 by 8 particle sub uv we can give 63 here i don't really know if it is 63 or 64 but it will be kind of the same now we can add this niagara system to our missile so go here and type in niagara particle system and we will add this in and if i press play and press e you can see that it is rendering the smoke but it doesn't look that good so now we can go to initialize particle and i will set this to like 0.5 and 1 and here for the sprite size i will just change this to a float then i will change this to a uniform range float then i will set the minimum value to like 20 and the maximum value to like 40 and now if i press play you can view the smoke like this now go to the particle again and here we can go to particle update then we can type in scale then scale sprite size and then we can change this to a float again and then we can click here and type in curl and float from curl with normalized age and here we can set this value to like 1 at time is equal to 1 and here at 0 we can change this value to like 0.2 or something like that now if i press play it is really small so we can change the scale to like 5 So now you can see that and we can use a scroll wheel to move this like this so here i will set this uh, value to like one and then i will add some curve motion to it and fix that and change this to like 20 then we can set the color so go to scale color so here we will type in make vector 3 from color and here we can select the color and here we can type in scale linear color by curve and we get this thing and here we can add a very bright orange color like 102 and i will set this to 1 so we can see it and now i click here and set this value to like 2 and here i will click here 
and set this to like black. So now if I press play, we get something like that. So in order to make it a bit more darker, we can click here and set this to a dark value also like this. And now if you want, you can also add a point light to your missile. So point light then change this to like an orange color like this then we don't really want this to cast any shadow and we will change the intensity to like 10,000 so you will have to add this if you want it you kind of add a nice effect like that So here you can see that the light is kind of affecting the missile from the front. So we can move this here. And for the missile, we can select this and type in channel and set this to second channel. So it won't be affected by the light. So this is optional also. So now if I press play, you can get an effect like that. So now we will add the custom mesh. So you can download one of this mesh so if you look at this you can see that it is a nested mesh you can download this for free so we need a mesh like this and now we can add this to the add spline mesh component like this and if i press play you can get an effect like this so now we can set the scale to like one So it looks like this. Now we need to create a new material for it. And here if you select this, you can see that there is two material slots. So the element one, we can add this white spline material. So I will just go inside here and I will just connect this to the emissive and change this back to the white color and click apply. Then we can add that here for this one. And now if I press play, you can get an effect like this. So now for the second effect, you can just duplicate this, then open it up. Then here I will just delete this and I will connect this to the MC color. And then I will change this to like translucent and I will connect this to the opacity. So now we get something like this. Then we can create a material instance out of it. And we can add this to here. And now if I press play, you can see that it is going in the opposite direction. And we also want this to be two-sided. So pick two-sided and here, we can one minus this so it goes in the other direction and now click apply so now you can see that it goes in the other direction so open up the instance then we can change the amount to like 5 and the speed to like Two, that's fine and here we will add another variable and we will call it power and we will set this to like 30 now click apply and press play now it kind of looks like this so now if you only want this in between the chains you can go to the blueprint so here what we can do is that we can get a branch then connect this to here and connect this to here I will just move it here like this now we need to ignore all the splines at the even index so we can just do a modulus 
of 2. So every time we divide an even value by 2, we will get a modulus of 0. So the remainder will be 0. So if it is an even frame, we will just ignore it. So we can do an equal to. And if it is 0, we will just note this. Not bool. And connect this to the condition. And press play. Now you can see that it is getting ignored every even frame. And if you connect this directly, then we get something like this. I think the speed is a bit too much. I will change the speed back to like 0.1 and I will change the amount to like 3. Now if I press play, we can get an effect like this. Now we can do some more improvements. We can go here. We can get a cosine of this. Power that. Then 1 minus that. Then multiply that like this. And connect this to the opacity. And click apply. So now if I press play. You can see that the edges are fading. Like that. Now we can control the amount of measures. So here if I select this uh, value, this value we subtract from the spline points. And if I set that to like 8 or something like that, then see here you can see that our spline points won't go inside the sphere like that. And if you want, you can change the color of the spline with some events. So here if I type in set vector parameter and change this to like the PC color we created and the color parameter and if I just set this to make linear color and I will change the green value to like 100 or something like that. If I press E, you can see that it is green now. So if you want to change with overlap, then we can set this pair to overlap in the collision. So if you set the grid to overlap or create a custom channel for it, just for this uh, actors, then when you are overlapping that, we can call the vector parameter and change the color to whatever you want. And if you want to get multiple colors, you can enable stencil by going into the project files and custom depth stencil and enable with stencil. Then if I open this uh, blueprint up, you can see that on overlap, we can set the custom depth stencil value to 1. Then in my demo material, you can see that I can select the color using a custom stencil R and the mask like this with one because this is set to one so here you can see that i am using a lerp and the highlight color is different for b so that's all you need to do so yeah i think that's it for the tutorial guys thanks for watching and if you want the project file you can support me on my patreon and and download the entire project file except for the marketplace assets so thanks for watching